Good morning, Marlene. So, we are going to do something super fun. Hey, Rinska. Hey, Adele. Good morning. Happy weekend. It's Saturday. I'm in a really freaking good mood, which is great because yesterday was like a super bad day. Um, those of you who know me well know that I battle anxiety and depression super bad. And so, um, yeah, depression was wicked bad yesterday. Super wicked bad. Um, but I got a really good night's sleep and I'm back at it. So, hooray for that. How are y'all doing? Uh-oh, looks like my dye didn't cut all the way. <gasps> Natalie, hello. So I've stamped out some flowers and apparently my dye did not cut it very well. Um, Cause you know, I'm try I was trying to hurry. I didn't even get to make my coffee for this coffee and coloring session. What is up with that? So I'm just separating the flowers right now. We're gonna get our color on. We're gonna color some of these flowers. But we're gonna color them super fast. So if you're gonna color along with me, um, just know that we're gonna color them super fast. If not, you can always watch the replay. Of course, oh, this die shifted super duper bad. That's what I get for recycling tape. I know, me without my coffee. Can you imagine, Marlene? What is this world coming to? That's why I'm dropping everything and allowing my dyes to shift and all kinds of crazy shiznickles going on. But that's all right. What we're doing, it's not super duper gonna matter. So I normally do not cut before I color. Um, well, thanks, Natalie. Um, I normally do not cut before I color. But um, in the effort to be, I, this is probably going to be a fairly long live. So, you know, so I've used the Sentimental Susan set right here. Um, I have used the Sweet Sincerity set, and that's this one. And I'm going to put this back in here so I don't lose any of my dies. So Sweet Sincerity, Sentimental Susan. I've used Tropical Flora, and that's right here. And then I have used the Affable Anemone, which is right here because I don't personally own dyes for it because a customer wanted the dyes really, really bad. And so I sold her my dyes. So that's what we're using. So get your glue guns ready because um, we're going to do a little bit of quick color in here. So first of all, I'm going to color the Sentimental Susan. And we're going to do, again, like I said, fairly quickly. Um, because in the essence of time, things are going to have to go fairly quickly. So I'm going to use Y28 and I'm just going to put some brush strokes, um, very close to the center. And the reason I don't like to cut before I color is it doesn't give me a whole lot to hold on to, but there are also good reasons as well to cut before you color because look at how easy it is to rotate this so that my wrist stays in a comfortable spot. 
So there's there's pluses and minuses. Um, I can see people doing that in in both ways. Um, as you're doing this, note that you do not have to Copic color your flowers. You can use oxide inks or all kinds of stuff. Um, thanks, Natalie. Hi, Holly. Um, oh, thanks, Christina. That's super duper sweet. So it's personal preference on what you like to do. Hey, Sharon. Um, it's... It really is personal preference on what you like to do, but you always want to color with your wrist in a neutral position. And um, so with these cut out, it's really easy to achieve that. But I'll show you when I color the anemones where they're not cut out, um, I just rotate the paper. So, I mean, honestly, whichever way you like to do it, it's... There's no coloring police that are going to come and arrest you for doing it a way other than directed. Personally, I don't like to cut them out before I color. So, anybody have any good plans this weekend? What's going on? What's happening, hot stuff? Hi, Kathy. Now I have Y21, and I'm gonna come from the outside of the petal back. It's so rare that I ever use three color blends. Um, I usually do five, seven, or nine. So more often than not, I do five color blends. Um, but when I get really into things like uh, pleats on dresses and things like that, you'll definitely catch me using seven or nine. But the Black Eyed Susans are such an easy flower to color. Um, you've been coloring fall cards. I am so fully, completely into summer that I am not embracing fall yet for any way, shape, or form. Oh my gosh, a pig roast? How cool. That sounds amazing. My camera is a little bit... Whatever, it's just gonna stay right there. Y'all are gonna see my big guts and all that stuff. That's all right. Okay, so now we're going to do the Sweet Sincerity. So this is a Sweet William flower and they can be literally any color. I don't know if you guys grew up with Sweet Williams or anything like I did, but I absolutely love Sweet Williams flowers. So I think today I'm going to make this one orange. So I'm going to start with YR18. You'll see me take a little bit more time on this flower because this flower tends to have a lot more striations in it. And they usually have some sort of stripe across them. Not usually, I guess there's just some of them that have a stripe across them. But nonetheless, we're going to be moving fairly quickly because I wanna put the whole project together. I've had this project in my brain for quite some time and it's just yearning to get out. Um, right, Sweet Williams are really pretty flower. So um, growing up, I after all of my sisters left, I'm the baby. I have three older sisters. Um, I got a horse. He was an Appaloosa horse. His name was Apache. He was such a good, I mean, even when I got him, he was fairly old. He was a senior horse. He was such a good guy. But anyways, my parents um, planted Sweet William's much all the way down his fence line 
and he never ate them. Now he would get out and he would go eat the clover out of my parents' lawn. Um, but I digress. Um, he had all of these beautiful sweet Williams flowers all down his fence line. And my dad, my parents, first of all, can grow anything. Like, seriously, anything. Those people have more of a green thumb than the people who have green thumbs. And so they um, had planted all these sweet williams in so many different colors. And it's just such a wonderful visual for my childhood. I remember seeing all of these beautiful flowers um, growing along my horse's paddock fence. And I just loved it. And so I'm very fond of sweet williams now. They're little and dainty, but they're pretty hardy, and they're so bright and fun. And like I said, there's a million different colors of them. So it's really cool. So what are our beverages of choice this morning? Hey, Joy. I um, I really want another cup of coffee. So I think I'll probably do that after this live. But after this live, it's going to be lunchtime. So I might be past the whole coffee thing at that point. Oh my gosh, I'm not even leaving the colors out. Okay. Um, raspberry iced tea, yummy. Hey, Janet, how are you? Um, let's see, what do I wanna do with this? Do I want to go, yeah, let's do this. We're gonna kind of fade it into a yellow-ish. So I'm just, um, notice I'm moving fairly quickly with my hand. And that is so that I don't create a pattern. Your brain will automatically want to create a pattern. So I'm doing my best to not create a pattern. And the way I do that is by going quickly. So see how there's like some up and some down. They're all different levels. I already do this one. Okay, next one. Awfully quiet in my house last right now. Chocolate cherry protein shake. Okay. I don't like anything cherry, so that does not sound good to me at all. I my craft room and saw you were live coloring flowers. Yay! Is your craft room like in the basement? Because you said came down to the craft room? Lots of places here have basements, but we do not. So it's always weird to me, the whole basement scenario. Okay, then I'm gonna go Y18. Goodbye, Natalie. You have a good day as well. I have a very busy day ahead of me. I'm getting ready for our next show, which is in Schaumburg, Illinois, next weekend. 
So I leave on Wednesday. I believe Sandy leaves on Wednesday too. Sandy and Linda are driving up to Schaumburg from Dallas. Cause Sandy's cray cray like that. I am flying over. Okay. One more yellow. I'm going to go fairly light and I'm going to go Y04. It is in the basement. Only place I could have big enough space. <laughs> right? And then with this color, I'm going to go from the outside towards the center. So I'm sure to fill in all of those little spaces. I don't know. It's like a love-hate thing, but don't you love slash hate when you have a project in your brain and you've had it there for like a long time and you just need to get it out of your brain so that you can move on. I feel like I am at that point with this project. It's a surprise, I'll show you what we're doing. I know it is nuts. Um, from Dallas to Schaumburg, Illinois. So I'll be flying over and they will be go driving. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use this yellow to fill in the stamen area, just the little spots. And then I'm gonna color those stamen in um, like either green or brown. Okay, so those ones are done. Now the tropical flora, which color, what color would you guys like the tropical flora to be? Oops, I forgot the little bud. So while you guys give me suggestions for the tropical flora, I'm gonna color in this little flower bud real fast. This is one of the Sweet Williams buds. Rinska, hello! Hello! Flower color suggestion for the tropical flora. That's what's on the table right now. Red, you want red, orange, and yellow? We can do that. I can make that a thing. It kind of would work with what I'm doing. Not gonna lie. Yes, red? We got two votes out there for red, so looks like we're going red. So we'll have red, orange, and yellow, and then you'll see this. Dun, 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 dun. <gasps> so that'll be like the green and blue. And then we'll have to do some sort of maybe purple ribbon or something. Um, an in-betweener, so like a cranberry color. I can do like a cranberry red. Kind of red, kind of brown. Okay, let's let's... So we're gonna start with R89. Again, coloring quite quickly so that my brain does not create a pattern. Also for time's sake. If I was coloring this flower to be like the main flower, on a specific card, I would definitely take a lot more time. Okay. 
Now, full disclosure on this one, the dies on the specific one that I have cut out do not match up um, because I've printed this from digital images. Um, I do have the stamp set, but I also teach a class at the expos using this specific flower. And so I already had a whole bunch of them, a whole bunch extra printed. So I figured waste not, want not. So it's like a couple of millimeters bigger than what it actually should be. So that's why the dies don't match up so well. And no, there is not a digital image of this flower. It's just because since I own the artwork, I happen to have the digital of it. And when you're making a whole bunch of these for a class, it is so much easier to print a whole bunch of them than it is to stamp and stamp and stamp and stamp and stamp. So most people, from what I understand, do not color this fast or cannot color this fast. Um, I don't know what it is about me that I can, but I'm grateful for videos like this that I can. Yeah, cranberry. Yeah, this one will definitely pop on this background. Oh, and there's one more flower that I'm doing, so I can do it purple because I still have the affable anemone. So that one can be purple. And so we'll, we will have covered the whole entire rainbow. Okay. Mm, with cranberry, I need to go, where's my, there it is. So I have R89 and then R39. I'm gonna go R37. And then we're gonna go into a little bit more pink with it. Yeah, so if I was making this flower to be like the showcase of the card, I would definitely be going along with the um, the little pleats in the edges of the petals and stuff, but you're not really gonna see it on this card. Well, this isn't even a card on this project. There goes Archie to bark at something. It was only like a half effort to bark at something. Okay, so I used R37. Now I wanna go down into the pinks a little bit. Um, So I'm gonna use R56 and bring that. R56 is called Current. Kind of bring that little bit of brownish tinge into your cranberry color. And then we're gonna come in with one lighter color.
Is that looking cranberry enough for you guys? Is that the color you had in mind? Yay, thank you for the hearts. It's weird when y'all don't talk. Let me tell you, you guys need to talk. <laughs> I know you're watching, but I don't have anything to, to talk about. Unless I'm feeding off of you guys and what you guys are saying. Okay, so then R56 I used, so I'm going to use RV34. Thank you, Kathy. My husband just got home from Costco, so you'll hear them in the background. The joys of live videos. So I'm being a little bit more careful on this so that I'm not coloring outside the lines. I do not have Copics. I have assorted less expensive brands, but I totally enjoy coloring with alcohol markers. That totally works. Um, Kathy, you can do whatever. I mean, alcohol markers to an extent are alcohol markers, just like crayons are crayons. Are there better ones? Yes. Um, are there, do they all still achieve something? Yes. So um, as long as you like to color, girl, get out there and color. And I teach... Um, Sandy and I both teach methods and techniques, so will they work better with the marker that we're using? Absolutely, but can you still apply that technique to whatever brand of markers you're using? Absolutely. So don't feel like because you have, you know, Tombow or Oahu or whatever those markers are, or um, now everybody's getting into the Olo markers, um... I don't feel like you can't follow along and participate and do these. Um, tons of people have Spectrum Noir markers. Um, things are slightly different because the nibs are different and the ink interactions are different, but um, it's definitely something. As long as you love to color, girl, go for it. Okay. That's a pretty cranberry color. I like it. I think it came out great. Okay. And then I have these affable anemones. So these are the ones that are on um I know, right? It always surprises me with what we come home with from Costco too. So I'm going to color these purple since I had a couple of people say purple. I might just color one, but I don't know. While we're at it, we might color both of them. And notice I'm just using the same technique on all of the flowers. Um, yeah, everyone has a different preference. I do prefer Copic. I have colored with the Olo markers. Um, I think that I think that they're on to something, but I also think that they're not quite there. I think they need a little bit more time and development and basically they need to go through like what Copic went through where they've had you know, years and years and years of people using their markers um, in order to work out some of the kinks. So I know that the people who work for and or created Olo um, actually worked for or have worked for Copic in the past. I know that their nibs 
very, very exceedingly similar to Copic nibs um, because I talked to them at length. And I do love that about them because there is no better nib out there than the composition of these Copic nibs. However, um, there's a couple of things that, you know, I'm not going to point out because I don't want anybody to have a bad taste in their mouth. I think it's a great idea. I think they're trying to fill a void in the market. I think they're definitely on to something. I just think they need a little bit more time in development. So that's my two cents. Not that anybody asked for it, but there it is anyways. Also, I don't know if I can keep two numbering systems straight in my brain because Olo has a very different numbering system than Copic does. And so that's the thing. But I'm excited. I'm excited that somebody's out there on the market. I'm excited that somebody's trying something different. Um, and I hope that they are successful and I hope that they become the norm sooner rather than later. But I just don't think I, I just don't ever see myself giving up my Copics. They're like children at this point. I know how all of them act and I know how they all interact with others. And so there you go. <laughs> the numbering system is confusing. Yeah. Oh yeah, you just got yours, huh? Have you colored with them yet? Or are you still just, you know, petting the package going, my precious? <laughs> Dinner in Cowboy Church in Ponder, Texas tonight. I listened to Christian singer Crystal Yates with the ladies from my Bible study group. So excited to hear Beautiful. Ooh, well, that sounds fun. Um, I've been itching to do some Bible journaling. So um, if you have an absolute favorite verse, let me know because I'm looking for different verses. And so um, I'm asking people in my group to give me their favorite verses so that I can do, I have, I have, okay, I have like five Bibles to Bible journal in, no lie. And um, one of them, I want them to just be like verses that people has, have recommended, if that makes sense. So I want it to be all verses that other people tell me to read and not just the ones that I'm personally drawn to. How are you guys doing? Jeremiah 29 11. You're going to have to DM that to me because otherwise um, it'll get lost in this conversation. <laughs> um, mine is 130, Psalms 139 14. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. I've always been drawn to that verse since I was in school. I am made for a purpose. I don't know what, but I'm wonderfully made. So everything that I'm going through is figure outable. That's what it's always meant to me. All right. Ooh, Ephesians 4.18. I love those. Thank you, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I, I agree, Holly. I started with Spectrum Noir um, 
and just evolved to Copics, I guess. Um, and then I figured there was no going back. I have used some Pro Markers um, because Pro Markers have some amazing purples and some beautiful yellows. And so I use them in between my Copic markers because they, the inks um, blend very well together. But um, other than that, I have not either. Oh, Philippines 4 8, not Ephesians 4 8. Okay. Good to know. Good to know. Okay. So now I'm going to do the centers of these, and I usually kind of wait till the end because I sort of use the same colors in all of them. So I'm just gonna do some dapples in this one. Reality is, is I'm probably going to um, poke holes in these and add stamen. So I'm really not gonna take, there he goes. There must be somebody walking their dog. So I'm really not gonna take a super long time coloring these um, because I'm probably gonna poke holes in them and you won't be able to see them anyways. So now's the time when you wanna start getting your glue gun ready because we're about to shape these and get them ready for our little project. So you will want to get your glue gun ready. The great thing about mother nature is that everything is perfectly imperfect. So you don't have to worry about being absolutely perfect on all of these. And note that I am an absolute perfectionist. I am the type A, I'm the type of type A that type A people go to to learn how to be more type A. So <laughs> knowing that, <laughs> uh, Chow versus Sketch is there's no difference. So here's the deal, Chow, is a round marker where sketch is an oval marker. So this is oval shaped, chow is round. Um, they have the same exact ink, the same exact numbering system, the same exact everything, but for these couple of differences. The barrel is round, so it doesn't hold quite as much ink. So this holds more ink than a chow, just by virtue because the chow is smaller. Um, the nibs are the same on both ends. So again, totally same, totally fine. The sketch has all of these numbers printed on the ends. The chow does not. Let me see if I can find a chow real handy right here. Yep, here we go. So let me do apples to apples for you. So this is V17. This is a chow marker. This is V17, this is a sketch marker. So you can see this is round, this is oval. This has the numbers written on the end, this does not. Um, when you take off the caps, same thing, they have the exact same sketch nib and they have the exact same chisel nib. Good morning, Milligan. So then when you put the caps back on, you will also notice the end with the chisel nib has no gray. The end with the brush nib has this little gray line. So you know which end your brush nib is. So the other difference is, is there's 180 of these, there's 358 of these. So these are slightly less expensive for when you're first starting, 
Um, the 180 is more geared towards like cartoonists and um, like, um, what is it? Maga artists and that sort of stuff. Ma manga, I can never say it. Um, artists, so they're the brighter colors where this is geared towards artists. And so this has a fuller range of colors. So if you start collecting these, you get all 180 of these and you wanna continue collecting, you can start collecting the rest in these so that you don't need the duplicates. However, if you are a full set syndrome person like me, I just collected all of them in these so that I have all the same markers no matter what. So hopefully that helps. Um, 139.14, I believe, um, Psalms. <sighs> it's been a while since I've looked it up, but I know it's 139. I think it's 139.14. Okay, so then I have leaves here, and I'm going to color them green. So I'm going to start with G85, of course. And again, I'm just going to do some really quick and simple and fast coloring They have the same, the markers have the same core in them, so you'll notice me take my caps, both of my caps off when I color most of the time. Um, the reason you do that is to equalize the pressure within the core so that you don't get blobs. I'm doing like straight up assembly line coloring here, guys, and I never do this this way. Never. You can ask Joy. She's been watching me color for a long time and she knows this is not how I normally color. It's probably freaking her out. FSS Woohoo. I don't even know what that means. You're talking in tongues to me, Milligan. And this one's all stamped all wonky, so I'm definitely going off the rails on this one. because of your time frame. Oh, my YG67, one of my favorite markers of all times. This poor little dude gets a workout for sure. It's just one of the coolest green colors. I'm gonna have to hide this petal or this leaf in the back because it's super wonky. I have a lot of work ahead of me today. I have to cut a whole bunch of sweet keepers for our make and take at our booth. We have them partially cut, and so I have to do the finishing up. When Sandy was here last time, we cut a whole bunch of them, enough that we thought would get us through all of the shows. We were wrong. So I will be cutting more of those today. Oh, full set syndrome, yes, for sure. Hooray for all of you with full set syndrome. It is a real thing. And frickin' Tim Holtz kills me because he keeps on releasing new stuff and I gotta figure out how to store it. So I'm an oxide and distress ink collector. I do actually use them. I don't just collect them, but it feels like I collect them. And um, 
he keeps on coming out with new colors. I'm like, look, jerk. This is not how this is supposed to work. <laughs> Super rude. <laughs> I want some brightness in here, so I'm using YG25. I want to know who of you that I'm totally freaking out because I never color like this. Those of you who have been in my group for a long time, because I know some of you are going, OMG. But this is how I roll today. So when I get in a super big slump and I don't know what to do with myself, and I'm coloring the white part of this petal too, or this leaf. Um, and I like cannot find my mojo. I color flowers because it just gets you coloring. And generally with flowers, you can pick like just a five color blend or a three color blend and you can completely zone out on it. And you can just color and color and color and color. And then at the end, you're left with this big, beautiful, amazing flower. Look at that. A mixture of chow and others, depending on my budget for crafts of the month. Yep, full set syndrome, for sure. Oops, I forgot the rest of this one. All right, so now we're going to cut out this anemone. Now you will see my type A personality come out here when I'm cutting out this anemone. For sure. Yeah, a lot of people created their um, collections by starting with chow um, because they are a slightly more affordable but for me I would I knew I was going to be replacing them later because I couldn't handle having a mix so and I just don't like that the numbers are not on the ends now I know I can make stickers and put the numbers on the ends and you know with the stickers but it just just didn't do it for me. So I went all in with the sketch from the get-go. And my husband, who's super duper cool, he would, instead of like, you know, like Valentine's Day or your anniversary or whatever, when they go to get you like flowers or something like that, he would give me the money to buy Copics so that I still had that bright, beautiful, colorful bouquet, but it was something that was way more useful. So they didn't die like the flowers died. So um, kudos to him for helping me build my collection um, by allocating funds that would have gone somewhere else. He knew that that's what I really, really wanted. So... He would just order Copics for me or give me the money to order Copics or whatever. Right? He's a keeper. <laughs> it's better than dyes. <laughs> yeah, because my dyes do stupid stuff like that. <laughs> but that's just because I didn't tape it down well. So don't mind me. That's not what the dyes normally do. You just have to take a minute. So with fussy cutting, I move both the scissors and the paper. I know some people say only move the paper. I know some people say only move the scissors. Um, that's too much thought that goes in it for me. So I move both.
Um, I don't like cutting on the black line. To me, it looks weird. I know a lot to a lot of people, it looks weird to have um, white around everything, but I like having a little bit of white because I think it makes it pop. It's just personal preference. If I do end up cutting on the black lines on something, I will always take a black marker and go around it. Um, so that the white edge of the paper isn't isn't sticking out. Okay, so with the anemone, I like to take my scissors and I like to go all the way down to the center. Okay, so now the petals are separate. I like the white, yeah. I just have never ever liked cutting on the lines for fussy cutting. I don't like the way it looks. Um, and more often than not, you run into problems when you're cutting out an image. So I've just always cut. So this is the tropical flora, and I'm gonna do the exact same thing. This just gives you a little more wiggle room with your petals so that you can, when you shape your flower. See, if you cut on the lines like this, I don't know, to me that just does not look pretty. There are some instances where it does, but I don't know. Just personal preferences. Okay. So then I'm going to grab maybe up right here. So this is my Heartfelt Creations. I'm kind of a Heartfelt Creations junkie, or I used to be before I had my own line of 3D flowers. Um, Sharon, I've used all different stamps. So I have the Affable Anemone. I have the Tropical Flora. I have the Sweet Sincerity. And I have the Sentimental Susan. So those are all the stamp sets I've used today. So I'm gonna pull out my flower shaping stuff. Um, and I'm gonna throw it on the ground, because I do that. So you always need your bottle of water the other thing I always grab out is my Crazy Creations glitter and my candy cup. And then I use my sponge. And this is just one of those big round sponges um, that you get really cheap. And I just cut chunks of it off. Okay. Um, and then lastly, I get some sort of piercing tool. A lot of times I'll just use my tweezers. Um... <laughs> what's going to be on your list for Christmas? <laughs> Copics? Kathy, if you love heartfelt, all of our flowers are meant to like go in line with the heartfelt flowers because um, I love them so much that I wanted to fill in some of the blanks. And so the sizing is made to kind of fill in some of the blanks that you can use with your flowers. So I'm just gonna take my tweezers, I'm gonna poke a hole, I'm gonna poke a hole, and I'm gonna poke a hole. Okay, I might make those larger, smaller, depending, whatever. Same thing with the anemone. And same thing with the tropical flora. I can't believe nobody's asked what my project is yet that I'm making all of these flowers for. Okay, 
So then I'm gonna work on shaping them. So I'm gonna start with the easiest first. The anemones are just kind of, their petals just kind of bulb out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put one spritz on the back and then I'm gonna go around the front of the flower and I'm just gonna kind of wrinkle all of this. Now, if you do not have these shaping tools, do not worry. You can use different things. So you can use like the cap of a pen. So I can go like this and use the cap of this pen to do this. Sharpies work really great for this too. So there's all different kinds of things that you can use. You do not have to have flower shaping tools at all. Okay, and then I'm gonna flip this over. And now I have this cool flower like that. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this one. One little spritz. I'm gonna break down these paper fibers and these petals. You are not wrong. I usually always make a card million, but today I'm making a project. I know, super weird. I got my crafty stuff on today. So we're going big. <laughs> yep, that works. I have that set too. There's actually a number of their tools that I prefer over the heartfelt tools. So, okay, so same thing, scrunch this up. So I'm gonna shape all of my flowers before I um, assemble them. So just FYI. Now the Sweet Williams, um, they're a little bit different in their shape and this needs to be trimmed just a little bit. Again, I like to make sure that I have lots of room to move my petals around. Not so much that it makes it, um, like it ruins the integrity of the flower, but a little bit more than what the dye provides. Okay, so with these, I'm just gonna flip them all over. One spritz. And then I'm gonna use this mini shaping tool and I'm gonna put lines. And then I'm gonna to come to the front and I'm gonna just slightly cup them forward. So lines on the back. and then cup them forward. Lines on the back. And then cup them forward. Okay, so then when I stack that up, and this will actually kind of lay a little bit more flat because Sweet Williams are a little bit more flat. Okay, so I have that one done. Now, um, the Sentimental Susan, this is a Black Eyed Susan, and what I like to do with that is I like to grab um, like a pen or a pencil or something fairly skinny let me see if I, um, a glue stick will work. Ooh, I like this pin. Okay, so see how this pin has a very thin barrel? So again, I always like to spray the back just in case I don't wanna, you know, screw up my coloring. So I'm gonna grab this pin and I'm just gonna roll the leaves or petals around this pin. Okay, then I'm gonna 
go into the center of the flower, just like that. Same thing with this one. Um, do you have the golf tools that are just silver? Those are heartfelt as well. I have those and I use them often. So there we are with that. Now, I'm gonna put a little shape on these leaves. Oh, and I still have one more flower to do. Yeah, I have the golf tools. They work fantastically. There for more fine detail. So you see, I'm not taking a lot of time to shape these. I'm not being super fussy about them. I'm just getting in there and doing what needs to be done. Am I entertaining y'all or are y'all bored at this point? Okay, so this is the last flower and I'm gonna blow your guys' minds with this one. So what I do with this flower, I put it in my hand, I spritz it, and then I wrinkle it up. I do this with a peony too, okay? Then I open it up. carefully so as not to rip everything. And so now my brain cannot create a perfect flower with this because it's all already wrinkled. So I take and I just accordion fold the edges. And as you're doing that, your thumbs naturally push down on the flower so you're left with a cupped flower. So I'm gonna do the same thing with this one. You're working on a project while watching, that's awesome. Oh, I forgot Craft Roulette was last night. I should watch and see what I should be making for my challenge this week. Even though I really don't have time because I have a lot of stuff that I need to be getting done for the show, but. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab my box of semen. And I have tons of semen here. This is how I make our packages of sweet sentiment semen. So I'm gonna pull out just some yellows. one of these with the wire. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this pile of semen and I'm gonna fold them in half and I'm gonna stick the wire through. I'm gonna bring them almost all the way up doing diamond dots. I love diamond dots. Right, Julie? Why, why are you beating up that flower? Um, where did I put my tweezers? There they are. Okay, so I obviously need a much larger hole. 
you want to start with your small flower first. This is the big one. And you want to feed this through. Same thing on the big one. Obviously, I need a little bit larger of a hole. And I'm gonna feed this through. Okay. Now, I'm gonna use my little snips and I'm gonna snip that wire off. A lot of times I'll just pull it through. We'll see if this one will work with me. Doesn't want to, so it's fine. It's just gonna stay right there where it's at. Okay, and then I'm gonna take a little tiny bit of hot glue and I'm gonna put it right down here in the flower And then in order to make this dry, I'm gonna put it in my hand like this. No, no, what are you doing here? Aren't you in Italy? Thank you, it's the Lynn Lily glue gun from Sherbonder. I love it. Okay. So first flower, theoretically and technically done. Now I'm gonna do the anemone. And I'm just gonna grab some random colors. These are my um, sweet stamen. These are from Sweet Sentiment. So you can get them in the shop. Um, these are the smaller of the two. I think we ran out, but the bigger ones are the same the same colors, they're just a little bit larger. And then this is just the piece of, that I cut off from the other flower. So I'm gonna go like this and I'm gonna twist it. Hi, Jen. I cannot believe you're here, you're dropping in from Italy. I hope it's going wonderfully over there. I hope you're having a great time. I trust that all of your flights went well. So again, I'm gonna put a little bit of glue in here. And I'm gonna put it down here where my fingers are. And I'm just gonna slightly cut this one just to make sure it adheres together. And then I'm frugal, so I'm gonna take this wire off and use it again. Now with my Sweet Williams, I think I wanna use orange. So most generally speaking, I don't do just one color. I do like a whole rainbow of colors. But for some reason, this one's feeling like it wants to just be orange. So, orange it is. Oh, 
Lost baggage? What do you mean larger in size or larger in length? What are you um, asking about? I forgot. Oh, they're larger. Um, the pearls on the top are a little bit larger. I found that I liked them better, so that's what I started using um, for the Sweet Sentiment stamen. I found that I like the slightly larger pearls on the top. They make a little bit more of an impact. Okay, so notice I'm always offsetting the petals. And then through this last one, I can't believe they lost your luggage. I'm so sorry, Nona. Okay. And then with this flower, I'm just going to simply put some hot glue right here. And offset these petals. And I'm gonna use I like to use my pen Oops. because it keeps that cup shape in the middle. It does make them pop, right? <laughs> uh, we have them in the shop. Okay. So now, y'all ready for this? It's glitter time. So what I do is I grab my Barely Art glue Yes, Christina, I haven't shipped them yet because um, Sandy has to ship them from Texas because I do not have a purple one. So I will have to have Sandy ship them from Texas to you. But I do see your order in there. Okay, so I'm spreading out the petals a little bit. <gasps> hey, bestie. Yes, I do package all the steam in myself. I do, I do. This is actually, I like to use this other knit. This is the only time I use this other glue. Um, not that the glue is different. This is still barely art glue, but this is the bigger tip. And then I just kind of squish it together. And then I kiss all the leaves, all the petals with it. Sandy, you're gonna love this project that I'm making because the basis for it came from you. Okay, and then I'm just gonna set this in my candy bowl. Ooh, and I have the fan on, so my glitter is gonna go everywhere today. I'm just gonna dump my glitter in here. Do you see how close that was?
Look at that. Hi, Debbie. It's not a lot of freaking work. It's pretty. Oh, you mean for the, um, to package the stamen? Yeah, it is a lot of work. But it's okay. I sit on my couch and I watch Murder, Death, Kill. And I just start packaging them. What's the most work is that I have to count them. So that everybody gets the same amount. Because I don't like to be unfair. So all the packages have the same amount. They might have some different colors, but they all have the same number of stamens. Beautiful. Southwest Airlines USA, and they lost my grandson's luggage at Christmas and called that airline and $200 voucher for his trouble, and he was used for purchasing his next airline ticket. Oh, well, that's a great idea, Christina. Thank you for sharing that. I glitter my leaves as well. so that everything looks frosty. Okay, more glue for my flowers. Oh, you just got back from the airport? Sad. <laughs> Goodbyes are sad. Did you have fun at the wedding? Did you have a drink for me? I got some amazing sleep last night, Bestie, and I am like a whole new woman today. You just wait. You guys going somewhere? Yeah. Are you live? Yes. Yep, we're back in the room. Okay. <laughs> Several for you and a shot. <laughs> Well, good. I'm glad. I'm making a mess out of my glitter today. Usually I'm a very clean, clean glittery crafter, but today, not so much. Oh, my husband's making my child drive. He had his first job interview 
a um, couple of days ago. And she said she would let him know this week. So he's nervous. And a lot of you will be really surprised to hear this. It is a lot of work, but I just, I love it. I, making flowers is my jam. And whenever I feel like my mojo is lost, um, making flowers is where I go to find my mojo. And I mean, you don't have to glitter dip all of your flowers and stuff. It's an extra step that takes a while and is a little bit messy and stuff. <laughs> But to me, it just adds such a wow factor that um, I just, I love doing it. I just love doing it. So. Okay. So there we go. With that, where did I put my pin? I'm gonna put my pin back in the top of this, okay? My new tattoo is um, Flowers from Alice in Wonderland. They are the flowers with faces from Alice in Wonderland. So then I will take a tissue and I will spritz it with water and any of the excess glitter I will just wipe up. Okay. Now, now for the fun part. You guys ready to see the project? Um, I will post a picture of it. It's on like the bottom of my ankle, so it's really hard to see. So Sandy bought me these cups. So these little coffee cups from um, Stampin' Up. And they are just the cutest little teeny tiny like espresso cups. So I took one of the coffee sleeves. This is from Moxie Java, which is where my son interviewed at. And I just traced it and cut out a piece of paper with it. This paper happens to be Yugo paper, so it's pretty flimsy. Um, but I can always glue it to this if I want to, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to glue it right to the cup. So I just open this up and cut this out. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap this around the cup. Just like that. Okay. So I'm actually going to glue this to the cup itself. I forgot I needed to. I left my glue open last night, full disclosure. So. But yeah, I'll post a picture of it. Of my, my new ink. And now what we're going to do is we're going to start gluing these bad boys on. So I'm going to start with the biggest one. Because I feel like that's going to be the hardest to work around. Okay. 
and I'm actually going to glue them over the seam so that there does not appear to be a seam. You guys hear my wash machine. <laughs> Holly. <laughs> This is not dishwasher safe. You are correct. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, that's a hard pass. But there was a method to my madness because I figured we could take this to the shows with us, Sandy. And showcase the flowers. Milligan, you're back. Okay, so now I'm gonna grab leaves. Oh, well, hey, that works out great. If Sandy's shipping from Texas and you're in Texas, that'll work out just fine. Oh my gosh, I'm all thumbs right now. Right? Do it. That's what this is all about, is giving you guys ideas. Giving you stuff to color. Giving you stuff to do. And of course, we want you to use your sweet sentiment stamps. So 
If you guys like this video, I would totally love for you to share it because that's how we get new people and new sweeties and new friends hanging out with us is share, share, share. Thanks, Jules. Okay, now I am gonna take a little bit of hot glue and put it in here, just like that. And I'm gonna take my glitter. And I'm gonna dump a whole bunch of glitter on it. I'm gonna shake it around. Just like that. No releases are the third weekend of the month now. So there we go. And then I can put the little lid on this. I can fill it full of treats. How fun is that? What do you guys think? Super cute. Yes, you will not want to miss our new release. It's next weekend, next Saturday, one week from today. Super cool. I could pull this flower out so it's not underneath the, there we go. Yay. So I've had this project in my mind for so long. Um, Yes, next weekend is the third weekend, correct. Third Saturday of the month is our new release day. So anyways, guys, there it is. There's our project. I hope you really, really liked it. Um, I will post this video to YouTube so you can watch the replay and so that you can share. Um, but thank you for joining me while we made all of these pretty flowers for this little cup. I think it's so much fun and imagine if you filled this with candy or something for a coworker. You can even stick a little gift card in there. Um, I think it's awesome. So, I know, so many occasions. You could do Christmas ones, you could do birthday ones, you could do all different kinds of things. So, anyways, thank you guys mucho and I will talk to you tomorrow at 11 a.m. again. See you later. Toodles!